Welcome back to Huawei Routing and Switching Elite Training for HCIE. Today topic we are going to discuss on ISIS. Let's start our part 4. Now let us examine what you call the route leaking in ISIS. Let's examine this example. In this example I have two area. So we have 47001 and 47002. Now in R3 and R4, we have both L1 and L2 router. Okay, and inside here, I have R1 that is running on level one and R2 that is running on level one. So the relationship between R1 and L3 will be level one and level one. Now, when R1 wants to go out from its own area, it have to pass through R3 or R4. Now due to R1 and R2 is just a L1, they do not have all the detail route. They only have a route that is within area 47001. Now for R1 to go out from its area, it depends on this L1, L2 router to inject a default route to R1. So R4 will inject a default route to R2. Now, when R1 wants to go to this particular network, okay, it will look into this routing table and determine that for me to go out to the 10.0 network, my nearest gateway for me to go out is R3. So what will happen here is if let's say R1 is going to go into the network here, it's going to go into R3 and R5 R6 and finally to 10 network. But let's look into the cost. This is the cost of 10, 50 at 10. So altogether you have 70. But I do have another option, which is a cost of 10 plus another cost of 10, another 10, another 10. So we have 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10, which is equivalent to 40. So in another word, R1 is using a suboptimum path to go to the 10 network. Okay, now this is where the issue here, because I can go to the other path, which is uh, more optimized. Now for us to solve this problem, okay, this is the first path. For us to solve this problem, we have to do what we call the route leaking. Now, route leaking basically said that whatever L2 information that I learned from L3, I'm going to leak it to L1. I'm going to leak this information to L1. Now, L1, when it receives this information, will assess that the cost in here is 60, and the cost over here is 30 plus here. Okay, it's 40. So end of the day, R1 is going to use a, a better cost. In this case, they were going to use the um, below here. Okay, that's the path that is optimized. All right, so let's look into the route leaking exercise here. So this topology, I have two area. So we have area 49001 and 49002. So router one is running on pure R1. Okay, so you can see that this guy is pure uh, level one. Whereas the router two and router three is L1, L2, and uh, this is on another area. Now because that uh, router one is belong to pure L1, we will have a L1 relationship. So when I do a display IP routing table, all right, so you can see that I have a default route that is being injected by router 2 and router 3. This is the next hop. 13.1.1.2 and 12.1.1.2. So 12.1.1.2 is belong to here and 13.1.1.2 is belong to here. And I have uh, network 4 and network 5 that is being uh, hidden by the uh, L1, L2, but I still able to ping. So in this exercise, I'm going to do a ping to Quad four, okay, and I'm going to do a ping to quad five. 
Alright, so as you can see that it is possible through the default route. Now, um, if let's say I'm going to change the cost, let's say this cost over here is actually higher. So will R1 able to see that this is a less preferred route? So let's change this particular cost. I'm going to change this cost to 20. Okay, that's belong to uh, router 3. So if I go into my gig 001 and I say that ISI's cost for this guy is 20. Okay. And uh, when I do a display ISI's interface G001. Okay. And uh, here I can't see the uh, cost but I can actually see from here you have to use the verbrose okay the verbrose keyword and uh, let's look into the cost here you can see that the cost uh, has changed from 10 that's the default to 20 so from our one perspective if this cost is 10 this is cost of 20 this is cost of 30 versus 10 10 and 10 uh, by right it should go the one to the top but because that this is an in l1 l1 do not have any preference between r2 and r3 so if i go back to r1 as you can see from here that it will still do a equal cost load balancing all right because it's invisible for me so what i can do here to let uh router one know that uh, don't come to me because i have a higher cost and go to R2, what you need to do is to do a route leaking. So on the router 3, I will go to the ISIS. I'm going to set that import route ISIS level 2 into level 1. All right. So I leak this cost information to router 1. So when router 1 do a display IP route protocol ISIS, you're able to see, okay, you notice that I have this information of 4 and 5, okay? And you also were able to see that the 4 and 5 here, uh, how they actually go is that they prefer to go to 12, uh, 13 dot 112, 13 is here. Now, why did they actually want to go to me? Well, the reason is because that I just do a leaking on router 3. Now, by right, they should go into 12, 112 instead of 13 because right now I give you a detailed route. Okay, and this detail route is being imported as a L1. So this lab is not finished yet. So let me go to AR2 and I'm going to leak import route. As I am going to leak the level 2 into level 1 and see what's the difference now. So in R1, when I do it one more time, you'll notice that this time, I'm able to see 4 to 4, but it's going to 12112. So it's, it's actually here. If you compare to the earlier one, so this one is uh, 4 to 4, and 5 to 5 is 12112. And if the earlier one, you notice that it went to 13. Do you see that? Okay, so if I do a display IP route, and uh, if I go for 4 to 4, all right, so you can see that that's actually go to gig 001, which is on the top. Okay, gig 001. Right. So uh, with the route leaking, router 1 now have the detail route of uh, 4 and 5. And not only that, uh, it will also able to determine that the cost in um, running on here, which is router 1, router 2, and router 4 is more optimized than router 1, router 3, and router 4. Now, when we do a display ISIS LSDB, you will also able to see that, you notice that there is an attachment bit of 1. Okay, so this is attached bit. So this attached bit basically means that it is a route uh, sorry, this is actually a L1, L2 who actually advertised to you. All right, so there's an attached bit. And uh, you will be able to see um, the route leaking from display 
ISIS route. Okay, so when I look into the display ISIS route, you notice that there's a U here. Okay, this is the route that is being leaked all right, to the uh, router 1. So what exactly is overload? Now let's examine this example. So we have, in this case, we have one area. Now R1 will use R2 as a transit router to go to R3. And assuming that all the costs here, they are 10, all right, clearly uh, R1 will use R2 as the uh, optimum path. But assuming that R2 have a problem and this is a a router that do not have enough resources. So for me to prevent um, the R1 from transit to me, I'm going to set an overload bit to send to both R1 and R3. Now once I set the overload bit already, what will happen here is R1, upon receiving that overload bit, will not use R2 as a transit to go to R3. It will ignore R2 as a transit and it will use another path to go out. Now because you set an overload bit equal to 1, all right, you make yourself not as a transit, but the router R1 will still able to connect to R2 for those connected interface. Okay, So you have to set the overload. And we also have a sub option for overload. So we can have allow for external or we have the option to allow for inter-area. Okay, so we are going to look at in the lab. Okay, so I added um, additional device. Um, I have router 4 to be parallel with uh, router 2. So I have two paths to router 3, or there are two paths from router 3 to router 1 to do a uh, loop balancing. So I also added uh, switch 2 so I can uh, have this uh, switch number 2 to use it as a uh, L2 relationship. Okay, as you can see that the network entity is uh, 49002 and uh, this side here we have 49000. So let's have a look on my routing table. Okay, I would like to uh, ask you to pay attention on this route. Okay, so we have a 3.3, .3, which is the router here. Uh, this router have two loopback. One is the loopback 0, and another one is the loopback 1 uh, that we created early on. And you can see that I have two equal course hop. All right, so one is 12.2, which is this router 2, and the other one is 14.4, which is this hop. Uh, same go for the uh, 33 network. I have 12.2 uh, and 14.4. Okay, so uh, let me do a trace to 3.3. Uh, as you can see that I have a 12 here and then I also have 14. Okay, so I can have this one as the first path and this one as the second path. Uh, basically, they are doing some load balancing. Okay, so uh, assuming that now uh, we do not want the uh, path to pass through router 2. So what we can do here is that we can actually set the overload bit. Uh, before we set the overload bit, uh, it will be good if let's say we can just do uh, wire capturing here. Okay, uh, let's just look into the uh, wire shark. Okay, so I would like to let the wire shark run for a while. Okay, so while we are capturing this. So this is on R1. On R2, assuming that I'm going to tell the uh, R1 and R3, don't cross me. Okay, don't use me to, to use as a transit. So just now, I, I need to go back to router 3 here. I also want to show you that there are two paths to router 1. Okay, so as you can see that uh, there is our network 1 here. I have uh, 23 as well as 34. So same thing, if I'm going to do a trace to quad number 1, I have two paths. Okay, so 34 and 23. So on router 2 now, I'm going to set uh, overload bit. Okay, so let's go to ISIS, set overload bit. Okay, I press enter. 
So it want us, it said that the ISI's processor will load state will set, continue, yes. Okay, let's have a look here. So if I go to project one and I do a trace, you'll notice that it go into 14. And if I go to router three, you notice that it's go to 34. The reason is simply because if I look into my routing table, and you look into one, there is no loop balancing here. And if I go to router one, there isn't have any loop balancing either to go to number three because the overload bit has been set. So if you go back into our wire shop, okay, so you're able to see some information from here. That is our CSMP. Okay, then that's our LSP here. And uh, if you look into here, you notice that there's an overload bit of one. Okay, so once you set an overload bit, um, in this case, router two advertised to router one and router three uh, in its LSP saying that don't transit me. So I'm not a, a router that uh, want you to transit, but you still can connect to. Uh, router 2 we are the direct connected interface you notice that 2 to 2 is still available okay right uh, now I'm going to show you another overload bit and if you notice that in my router 2 just now when I set the overload bit they do have allowed two condition you can allow an external or interlevel okay now for example in router 2 uh, let me show you here I'm going to undo my set overload so that you were able to have the loop balancing back. All right, there you can see that the tree now have two uh, gateway here. So I go back to router two. As you can see that I have a loop back zero and loop back one, and inside my loop back one. I enable ISI, so I'm going to disable the ISIs. Okay, and I'm going to make this as a external route. So for me to do that, I will just go back into ISIs. I said that import route direct. Okay, so when I go to router one, you're able to see number 22 as well. Should not be any problem. Okay, just wait for a while. It will take some time for it to propagate. Okay. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel.